Huh? Come on and give God a hand praise uh, because you are the church of life. Uh, me now. My heart is fixed. My mind is made up. I'm as saved as I can be. I'm saved from my bald head to my toes. Come on here, somebody. And there's somebody wanting the coming of the... Even so, come on, Lord Jesus. We're ready, but we're waiting for you. Set the world down and tell God, Lord, I'm going with you all the way. Whatever you want from me. If you wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'll roll out and pray. Come on, give God a hand praise. Tell somebody you have Holy Ghost from Priorities. So come on, come on, be happy, be happy, rejoice. Your stuff is on the way. God's going to add it. We bless thy name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you again. We thank you, Lord, because your spirit is already here in the atmosphere. Now, God, we pray that this atmosphere will continuously be conducive to house your presence. We thank you for the release. We thank you for the release. We thank you that yokes are being destroyed. Burdens are being lifted. Somebody is encouraged in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we bless you in Jesus' name. Let all the people of God say amen. Amen again. Amen one more time. Would you clap your hands for Pastor Marty? Would you clap your hands for Apostle Alexander? Amen. And would you just give God a great big praise that you are here tonight and you are being kept by the power of God. Amen. We salute everybody that is anybody in the Lord. <laughs> Amen. We don't want to omit anybody for all of our guests. If you are a pastor, if you are a bishop, or if you are a willing worker, who whatever your station is in the kingdom, we salute you in the name of of the Lord. Amen. I also want to salute especially uh, the Shield of Faith Pomona prayer team. Yes, I do. Come on, you all ought to clap your hands for those that are praying for you every day of the week. Not just Monday through Friday, but we be getting calls on Saturday and on Sunday. And sometimes I've been like, Lord, would you please just give us a little reprieve? But prayer always works. So we are glad that the Lord can trust us to call on his name for you. I salute my husband. That is a good man. Next month be 43 years. So glad that... The Lord has kept us. Amen. Tonight, we're not going to tarry long. You don't even have to stand up right now. You can be seated. And um, <clears throat> I uh, go to the clinic sometime. My task is tonight, as you have already noted in your women's program, that this is supposed to be a prayer clinic. Amen? Prayer clinic. How many go to the clinic from time to time? I mean, some of you are avoid going to the clinic, right? You don't want to know what the doctor got to say, do you? <laughs> but you want to know what God got to say tonight. <laughs> Clap your hands for that. We come bearing good news. Amen. Yes, we do. We have the report of the Lord. Amen. We have limited time tonight, so we want to make good use of it uh, in the time that has been allowed it. And our assignment tonight is just simply share with you some of the tidbits on prayer and to encourage you in the life of prayer. And then we are going to conclude the hour by actually praying. Amen. Uh, some will say, well, I don't know how to pray. Some will say, I don't know what to pray. Then there are others that will say, God won't hear me when I pray. And then the other ones will say that too much work goes in to prayer. But I believe, like the word of the Lord has been declared already this year, that this will be the year of greater anointing. Now with that, though, the anointing comes with a price tag. And it all begins with prayer. Somebody say prayer. But in days gone by, the old folks, and you know, now we're in that category, they used to tell us, no prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. Some prayer, some power, but much prayer, much power. How many want to go up in your prayer? 
So wherever you are or whatever station that you're in, we want everybody to come on up. Amen. Say, so we got to go up. We got to go up. We will attempt to stay reflective and encouraging, and we want to remain in the teacher's mode. I really don't want to have to preach tonight, but we just want to share some few of the little key principles that we are currently teaching on. Let me see the hands of those that are in our prayer class or you that have been there. Well, better yet, why don't you just stand up? So, you know, because I don't have my glasses on and you know, it takes a little time to focus. And I left my glasses by accident, so y'all really better pray for us. All right, so wonderful. Clap your hands, would you please, for these that have been blessed in the prayer class, and it has been truly a blessing. We see, please stand, the guests, yes. Please stand, this gentleman, Pastor Craig, came up to me on yesterday, and he says, I've been inviting this gentleman, give us your name again, Robert, Roderick. He's been inviting him to church for a long time. And yesterday, Pastor Craig dropped him off over in our class. And then he came back and he said, guess what? My friend says, he enjoyed it so much, he is going to come back. So I am so glad for him. Amen. Clap your hands, saints of God, here at Shield of Faith. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of the class, even on yesterday. But he was so excited that he told the one that invited him that he will be back. So that is a blessing. Um, I really would like to state something uh, earlier on, and that is this. One of my greatest concerns for this ministry is that God would provoke this body to a deeper commitment to praying personally and also collectively. Come on, people. Praying personally in your personal prayer time, in your prayer closets, in your prayer chambers, in your prayer bathroom, on your job, in your car, wherever you are. It is my personal desire as the Shield of Faith Pomona prayer leader that God will give us a greater commitment to pray. And not only to pray personally, but that we will pray more so even as a collective body. Somebody say a collective body. Because where there is unity, there is what? There is strength. And it is not necessary for us to beg anybody or remind anybody what time it is because we all see the time. And we know what time it is and we say that it's now time to do what? Call on the name of the Lord, because his name is a what? Come on, talk back to me. His name is a what? And the righteous run into it, and they are what? So we have to understand that prayer is our greatest tool that has been given to the church. It is the greatest tool that has been given to us that are in the kingdom of God. And many things can happen with prayer, but I can assure you, nothing will happen without it. So if we want to see God moving and working, I mean, we got to get on in it. And we got to push in it. We got to stir in it. We got to be activated in it. You want to be a, having a greater anointing? I say, do you want a greater anointing? Then it's going to cost you something, and it starts in prayer. Now, I also would like to tell you that for you that have not been a part of the class, and since we are going to be expounding just a little bit, a little tidbits from that, this happens to be in my personal view, and I have a lot of books in my library on prayer, but this is one of the greatest books that I have picked up on prayer because it helps anybody starting off at a beginning stage and whether you are in like a, the middle stage or, or you really up there, it will take you through some very strategic 
elements of what prayer is, what prayer is not, the postures of prayer, so on and so forth. So if you don't have it, I want you to come to me and ask me about how you could get it. This particular book we've been on since a year now, since we have been in the class, and we're only on chapter number 12. And that just shows you how impacting it is. And not only that, but the teacher takes the time to really go through because we're not trying to race through. We're trying to get what it is that we need to have so we can go deeper in our prayer. And this is just from basic training to targeted strategies. And what I love about this, because many of you have already heard of the movie, The War Room. Is that correct? How many of you have seen it? Okay. The authors and the directors of that movie wrote this book. And this book is not only in a particular reading format, but it also comes in a study guide. So it is a dynamic element to have, and we thank God for having that as an instrument for us during this season, because I heard Apostle teach one of the most powerful Bible studies on prayer uh, as he did a couple of weeks ago. How many have been listening to that? You need to go back. I don't know, did we video that that night? Did we tape it? For you all that missed it, you need to go back and get those two weeks that he expounded on prayer. It is so fundamental. And I know for some people, prayer may seem like, oh, why do I need to do that? But why not? Amen. I mean, why not? Amen. Amen. We do everything else, so we certainly need to do that. Amen? Amen. Um, now, I would like to also let you know that we brought some wonderful handouts for you. And Sister Lynette, Minister Lynette, would you please be so kind? And for you all that are in our class, I would like for you not to take one unless there are extras. So everyone that is not in the class, would you please be kind to raise your hands and they're going to make sure that you get one of these on tonight. And what we did for you is that some people say, you know, I have difficulty when um, I get down to pray and, you know, and the next thing you know, I'm falling asleep and I may start praying for the church and look like I run out of words. I start praying for my pastor. I run out of words and I start praying for my children. I run out of words. I'm praying for uh, encouragement. I'm running out of words. You don't know quite what to say. What we're giving you tonight is some fundamental scriptures. Everybody say fundamental scriptures. Because God honors his word. When we pray, it is important that we use the word of the Lord. Because heaven and earth shall pass away. But my Bible says not one jot. Not one tittle of the word of the Lord is going to pass away. So when we call God in remembrance of what his word says, because we understand that his word is the final authority. So everything that we need to govern our lives, it is in the word of the Lord. Everybody say it's in the word. It's in the word. Amen. Now, I don't want you to really get distracted with this, but I just want you to have this. Amen. It's no charge to you, so don't feel like you have to give it back or give us any money for it. But we did that because we want you all to have a guide. So when you get down to pray about certain things, you will have it in front of you, and you can use it as a gauge. Even I use these elements from time to time when I am down praying, praying for the nations, praying for our government. How many want to know how to pray more effectively and more better? Amen. Yeah, we do. So we want to have the word of the Lord. Amen? Amen? All right. So that's with that. So now we're going to go to some of the elements that we have been talking about. And that is in uh, chapter number 12 and also chapter number 11. In chapter number 11, we came to understand some of the locks and hindrances to our prayers. One, praying without knowing God through a bona fide relationship with him. Two, praying from an unrepented heart. Three, praying for show. Four, praying repetitively, 
or empty words. Five, prayers that we simply don't pray. Six, praying with a lustful heart. Seven, praying while mistreating others. Eight, praying while ignoring the poor. Nine, praying with bitterness and unforgiveness towards someone. And number 10, praying with a faithless heart. Now these things do matter to God. So if we plan to be effective, we need to be willing to ask God what it is that is tying up or binding our prayers and hindering them from reaching his throne room. There are some things, everybody say some things, that we will not be able to walk over until we make it right. Let me repeat that. There are some things that we will not be able to walk over until we go back. Everybody say, go back and make it right. I mean, just do it right. I mean, you know what ain't right because if you got the Holy One living and residing on the inside of you, that Holy Ghost will lead and guide you into all truth. And it's not just talking about the revelation and the baptism in Jesus' name. You know when you didn't cut your eyes at somebody. You know when you didn't lie on somebody. You know when you have done something you ain't had no business doing. So we have to do what? Tell the truth and shame the devil. Get right, church, and let's go home. That's how it works. And you know, sometimes it's something about the spirit of conviction. We get down to pray and it looks like we have a movie screen that rose before us. I mean, have it happened to anybody besides me? Don't y'all sit up there and make me look like I'm the only one that God ever talks about to the stuff that is existing maybe in our lives. But listen, as I am getting older and as I am praying more, I don't want my prayers to be hindered. I'm investing too much time, too much energy, too much sweat for God not to hear me when I pray. I got too much stuff laying out there on the table that I need God to come by and say, I got an answer for you. So I'm going to say it again. There are some things that you will not be able to walk over. You can't preach over it, you can't pray over it, you can't fast over it, you can't do nothing until you stop and go back and get it right. There are some offensive things of the spirit that bear great consequences and we will not be able to forge forward, trample over, or have the ultimate victory until we do a humility check and acknowledge it. I was wrong. I was out of order. I shouldn't have said that. And then better yet, I shouldn't have even said it like that. Because some things we say is right, but some things that we say, we don't say it right. And it becomes an, an offense. There are some things that really offend God, saints of God. And this is something that we learned when we were coming up. You know, you know I came up in the church at a different time, all right? And there were some things that they would teach us when we would be praying and as we were going on a fast. And, and, and you know, and we, we, we you know, uh, they would tell us how to go over there and pray and get in the corner. And I said, now, don't you go over there with all that sin on you. Don't go over there with all that stuff on you. Don't do that. And, you know, and we would have, you know, old-fashioned saints meetings, right? <clears throat> Lord, we didn't like them saints meeting. Because, I mean, you know... <laughs> The preacher was stopping, and, and, and they called everything dirty and unclean. I mean, I mean, you couldn't do nothing. So you had a sensitivity of the spirit that was different. I mean, you walked by somebody, you had to speak to everybody. I mean, you had to beg everybody pardon. I mean, you just had to go back and make it right. And maybe it was not a sin, but it was offensive in some manner. But Lord, where have we gone to today? Now we walk over stuff. We stomp on top of stuff. I mean, we sleep with it. We roll up with it. We curl up with it. And then we get up and say, Shut da -da 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 -da. Uh -uh, it don't work like that. The anointing is grieved if we don't treat it 
right. Come on, people. I said, come on, people. Because we want a greater anointing. We want a greater capacity in the spirit. So that means we got to have a course correction. We got to turn around and we need to go back and we need to say, Lord, what is it? You know, there are some things we've been praying over for a long time and we haven't gotten an answer to just yet. Have you considered that you need to go back and say, Lord, what's tying it up? Lord, what's hindering my prayer? You know, I'm believing you and I'm trusting you. Oh, but I dare you to get quiet. I dare you to get quiet. I dare you to get still. Oh, because God will come along and he will speak to your heart. And he'll let you know some things. I share with my class. I say, listen, class, let me give you a foundation element. I say, don't get out of the bed until you have some sort of supplication with God, period. You greet him. You say, good morning, Jesus. I mean, you acknowledge his sovereignty. You acknowledge his omniscience. I mean, you acknowledge him as being the almighty one. You know why? Because if you get your feet on the floor and you go about doing your business, the enemy is waiting on you. I said he waiting on you. He waiting on to fill your head up with a whole lot of trash. So before you get out of the bed, say, Lord, order my footsteps today. Lord, guide me today. Put a seal over my mouth today. Don't let my eyes behold nothing dirty today, God. That's how that works. Amen. So, all right, I'm supposed to be teaching something here. All right. So, <laughs> this is how it works, saints. And I'm saying if we as a body, we as individuals, I'm talking about filled up with the Holy Ghost, and I believe originally, Pastor Marty, correct me, this was supposed to be a, a revival, right? That means a restoration. That means a turning back to doing things that we used to do. You know, some of us have forgot that the altar really is here. I mean, the altar is here in the front of the church. I mean, they, you know, I used to point to one of these souls that come to prayer all the time because, you know, he'd be looking a certain way. I, and, you know, now he's doing pretty good. I don't even have to tell him. He just go on down there and get on the... I mean, nobody have to tell us that the altar is in the church. I mean, we know the altar is in the church. We know we got prayer on Tuesday nights. We know we got prayer on Sunday mornings. Why is it then that we as the tongue talkers and the born again believers got to be told, y'all come to prayer now, y'all come to prayer again, and y'all come to prayer? I mean, really? Do we have to do that? Some of us have not darkened the house of the Lord for prayer in years. But when we first got saved, we found our way to the altar. Nobody had to tell us when we come into the door, kneel down and offer up a supplication before God. We did it automatically. We didn't just plop down in our seats and go to blowing bubble gum and chewing and smacking and eating chicken. I found a chicken bone back there on the pew. And I say, what is this? Who going to come in the house of the Lord and eat chicken? His house is the house of prayer. All right. So, there are some things offensive. Everybody say offensive to the Spirit of God, and it bears great consequences. To whom much is given, to whom much is given, now I'm going to use this like this. Y'all take me, right? Y'all believe that I pray, right? Y'all believe that I'm saved, right? But if y'all saw me down there in that liquor store and I was picking up a fig of Jack Daniels, then you're going to be saying, Mother, I thought you was. Am I right about it? I said, am I right about it? There are some things that don't belong to the children of God. Now, we that are barriers of the word of the Lord, it says, be ye clean. Y'all want me to go over here? It said, be ye what? Clean. clean, that 
or the barriers of the Lord and of the Lord's word. So me standing up as a teacher of the word, a preacher of the word, and you see me living dirty, then how can I expect? Come on, saints. I'm talking about prayer now. That's all we're talking about. I'm talking about how we can do it and we can't cover up a whole bunch and put trash on top of it. And then we're going to expect for God to anoint it. God don't anoint no trash. He will not anoint no trash. He will not anoint no trash. He won't do it. All right? So, now we're in chapter number 12. So I've told you about some of the locks and hindrances to prayer. Amen? So now I want to tell you just a couple of them, a few of them, the keys to prayer. First and foremost, we simply need to pray. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says like this, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and mighty things to come. In Psalms, the word of the Lord says he reveals his secrets to whom he loves. Now, if we want to know God's secrets, and if we want him to answer us, then we got to call on him. I mean, we got to call on him. I mean, your call may not be like my call, but you got a call down on the inside, and your call is just as valuable as my call. But the thing that God wants you to do is to call on him, for he will do what? Answer prayer. We used to sing that song, if you call on Jesus. him to answer our prayer. Then we want him to show us things that we are not aware of, things that we don't know nothing about. You know, God will protect us from traps if we would just acknowledge him. That's why the word says, do what? In all of your ways, do what? Acknowledge him and he will do what? He will direct your path because it's not left up to man to order his own steps or to chart his own course. But a good man's steps are done what? Ordered by the Lord and he does what? Delighted in his way. Clap your hands everybody if you want God to delight in your way. So we have to call unto him and he promised us, he assured us that he will do what? He will answer us and that's why in Matthew 7 and 7 it says it like this. It says do what? Ask and it shall be seek and ye shall knock and the, but you're not going to get it if you don't go asking. You're not going to find it if you don't go seeking. And you're not going to get it if you don't go knocking on the door. Amen? So that is a fundamental principle. So in that comes this. Persistence. Everybody say persistence. That means to continue to endure over a long period of time. In spite of difficulty or opposition. Oh. It means to do what? Endure. Everybody say endure. Over a long period of time. In spite of difficulty or opposition. Luke 18 and 1 says this, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to do what? And not, what does that word faint mean? It means to give up or to lose heart or to become discouraged. Then it says, saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God nor regard man, 
because of her continually, <laughs> because this widow trouble me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, she does what? Weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust, he, see I he say unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect? I mean, that's you and I. I mean, put your name on it. Which cried night and day unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Oh, nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, will he find faith on the earth? So what is this word telling us? That regardless of how we feel or what it's looking like, we got to stay the course when we get through saying, Abba, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy blessed name. Because after all, we are saying what? Thy kingdom come and thy will be done where on earth as it is in heaven. And that's the hardest thing for us to do sometimes is to wait on God. Oh, it's hard for us to wait on God. Oh, we get in a hurry. We get despondent. We get discouraged. But we got to keep on asking God. We got to keep on knocking at the door. We got to keep on supplicating. I mean, there are people that are giving up just a little too soon. But if we just go back and knock one more time, if we go back and ask one more time, if we go back, if we go back, I guarantee you sooner or later, oh, like the Song says he may not come when you want it, but he's always on time. He's always, he's always, he's always. He's always on time because he's a what? He's on time, God. Uh, hey, yeah, he's a on time, God. Somebody say he's a on time, God. But I gotta be persistent. I can't give up. I cannot get faint-hearted. Oh, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Oh, wait on him, wait on him, wait on him. Tell your neighbor we got to be persistent. Ephesians 6.18 says like this. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching therein too with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. First Thessalonians 5, 16, pray without ceasing. Philippians, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Oh, let it be known, let it be known. Let God know I'm still waiting on you. I'm still trusting in you, Lord. Oh, yeah. He will not get off the throne until he come by and see about you. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, I don't want to preach y'all sit down. Please sit, sit, sit down. Oh, but that's the way God is. Oh, he see you and he knows all about you. And that's what the Lord impressed upon me to tell everybody, don't stop praying. Don't give up. I don't care what it looks like, what it feels like. Oh, but they got to say about it. But whose report are you going to believe? And we will believe the report. Ah, persistence. Say persistence. The next element is faith. The Bible says, now faith is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not. And by it the elders did what? Obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a what? A more excellent sacrifice than his brother Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death 
and was not found because God translated him. But in verse number six, it says, but, everybody say but. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that do what? Diligently seek him, not sporadically. You don't check in with God in January, and then you don't see him again to June. No, you got to be diligent. Oh, you got to be diligent. There are some times when we get down to pray, and we're asking God for something, and it seems like, Lord, if you don't hurry up, and come and see about me. I'm about to do something foolish, but we got to wait on them in faith. I mean, that's how the elders obtain a good and a righteous report because they did what? Through the eyes of faith, though they had not seen it, though they had not obtained it, they yet believed God. So without faith, we know that it's what? Impossible to please God. Oh, it's impossible to honor God if we don't have faith and confidence in the blessed word of the Lord. In Mark eleven twenty four, he says, therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever things ye desire, when ye pray, it says what? It says when you pray. So it tells us that when you desire something, you're going to pray about it. I mean, ain't no need to sit up to my wishing and uh, 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 uh. you got to get down there and you got to ask God about it. So it says, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, do what? Believe that ye receive them and ye shall what? I mean, listen, I got some granddaughters. And you know, them little babies, they special to mama, to granny. That's what they call me. I mean, there's some things my granddaughters don't even have to ask me. I mean, they don't have to ask me because I honor the fact that they are good girls. Oh, but that they, it's like this. I never will forget this story. Thank you, Jesus. I think the granddaughter was about six years old. Was she six? One day she was just sitting next to Papa. I'm talking about Jordan, I call her granddaughter. All right, so everybody know which one I'm talking about. 16 year old, the one that runs track. You know, that comes in first place. That's the granddaughter, all right. I say she comes in first place. I mean, she had three medals, did she? What'd she get, Lynette? I mean, whatever she got. What did she get, honey? Somebody tell her. What'd she get? Well, we know about the straight A students and all that good stuff. She's an, you know, honor student and, and she's doing real good. She's on her way to a scholarship because she tells Granny that she's going to be a pediatrician. That's what she said. She's always been saying that. So I bless God for her. But let me tell you what she did when she was six years of age. She was sitting next to Granddaddy and she said, Papa, just out of the blue. Nobody asked her opinion or her conversation about this. But she says, Papa, you know, I've never been to Hawaii. I said, that's what the granddaughter said. And so the next thing that uh, he said, uh-huh, six. So he said, really? And she said, and you gonna take me too? Ask me, did he take her? Yeah, he did. And because, you know, she got a little sibling, we couldn't just take one and not take the other. So the other one was blessed too, just because her sister stood in faith, knowing that her... I said, she knew her papa was going to take me. She didn't say, will you take me? She said, you going to take me. Well, sooner or later, guess what? Papa conjured up some money. Wife, you get some tickets. We taking them babies over to Hawaii for spring break. That's how it works. Now, if we in the natural got enough sense to treat our little ones and our loved ones like that, how much our heavenly father, who owns the cattle on a thousand his or his, Certainly he ought to give me a piece of one of them prime ribs. That's the way God is. We don't have to go through a whole lot of drama because it does not please God when we don't have and when we are in lack. But he said that he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a what? A rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Oh, they're seeking him on Monday. Then they're coming back 
back on Monday night. Then they're seeking them on Tuesday. Then they come back on Tuesday night. Oh, then they wake up again. And they say, Lord, here I am. Oh, and then God honors that. And then they pray it again on Wednesday night. On Thursday. On Friday. On Saturday. And then they show up again on Sunday. Oh, he's a rewarder. I want you to know that God is a rewarder. Somebody say he's a rewarder. Oh, we used to sing a song. Put your time in because payday is coming after a while. After a while, after a while, God is going to show up and answer your prayer. Oh, he will answer, he will answer, but you got to call on him. So, see, y'all make me misbehave because we're going to pray by faith. And it's noted that people who don't think what they would get for when they're praying, most likely they're not going to get it. I mean, I know I can get some stuff out of that man over there. Yes, I can. Almost 43 years of marriage, and you mean to tell me I can't get nothing? The devil is a I? I know all his digits. He don't know all of his digits, but I know them digits. And every now and again, I have to ask, you know, for certain things. Yes, but because I've been a good wife, a loving wife, been minding my business, cooking that chicken, cooking them greens, and them sweet potatoes, and that buttermilk cornbread. And every now and then I come back with a peach cobbler. Don't tell me that that man won't turn around and bless me. Oh, I said he'll bless you. Oh, listen girls, if y'all want some stuff, stop asking so much and just do it. You ain't gotta say nothing, just do it. I mean, just do it. I mean, you know how to turn on the stove. And if you don't call me, I'll tell you how to get that chicken together. I mean, really? After all this time and you don't know how to get it done? Well, I'm going back here. So now faith is the substance of things, what? And the evidence. Y'all see Pastor Evan, he be just smiling. That's why he be smiling when he come in here. Because you know, mama didn't took good care of him. It says, but faith is the what? Substance of things. And the evidence of. And by it, we obtain, the elders obtain a good report. Now, the next point is patience. Patience. Whoa. Everybody say, uh oh. We don't like that one. Patience means that you have the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, suffering, without getting angry, losing your temper, irritation, or the like. Y'all want me to repeat it? No, you don't. But you're going to repeat it now. Everybody repeat it after me. Say, patience is... I will have the capacity to accept, tolerate, delay, trouble, suffering without getting angry, losing my temper, flying off the handle, or irritated with what I don't like. Well, we all going to be on the altar in a minute. Because we all get irritated over stuff. I mean, there are some people that you want to walk up to them and bust them in the head. If you knew you can get away with it. Can I get a witness, anybody? I mean, is there anybody that you would like to just go out to their car and you know what they drive it and get your keys and say... That's called irritation. Because there are some things and some people that actually work your nerves. And they do it. But that's patience being worked out in us people of God. Yes, it is. It's patience that's 
being worked out. I'm, I'm, I'm going to read James 1 and 4. It says like this. But let patience have her, that she may be perfect and entire, what? Wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let us do what? Ask of God to give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive or obtain anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable. So, when patience is being worked out, this is very fundamental because there are times that we do get tired of waiting. And we are ready to fix stuff ourselves. We are ready to take matters into our own hands. Oh, if you don't believe me, you ought to ask Abraham, did he not do it? He had gotten a promise from God, but it looked like God was taking too long to fulfill his promise. So he and his little old wife, they go conjure up something, and then, you know, they get a mess. They get God's second best. And we now, hundreds and thousands of years later, are living on the consequences of their actions and we got turmoil in the world because somebody refused to have patience and wait on God but I'm here to tell you wait on it you have the capacity to accept to tolerate delay trouble suffering without everybody say without getting angry or irritated. For the last two and a half years, and I'm, I share this with people because, you know, it's good for you all to know that just because you may teach or preach the word of the Lord or you pray that you are not exempt. So I'm not telling you something that I don't know what I'm talking about. But there's been something that we've been going through for two and a half years. And in these two and a half years, I've been tested in a way that I didn't know I could be tested. I've been tried in a way that I didn't know that I could be tried. You know, because I think I'm a pretty good person. You know, I ain't said I was, you know, you know, the best thing that rolled off of Jesus' agenda. But I said that I believe that I'm a pretty good person because I strive to treat people right. I really do. I strive to live right. I mean, with everything that's within me, I try to be nice to folks. I really do. I mean, you know, I really... Do. I'm just saying, so like some of you are, right? But there comes a time when we're asking God about some things, and as you're going deeper into your life of prayer, you got to have a stimuli that will come along and irritate you so you will know what you're really made up out of. You'll find out whether or not you're really praying and you're loving everybody like the Bible say. You will. So uh, because I've been irritated... I didn't even know that that was part of patience, not to be irritated and um, angry and uh, suffering. I just thought you just wait. But I didn't know that you had to have a certain attitude while you was waiting like that. Not all of that, you know? So uh, a couple of weeks ago, because I've been praying about this situation. I mean, really praying. I mean, I got other people in agreement praying. I mean, we calling down the hosts of heaven. I mean, we calling on Jesus. I say, we calling on Jesus. And I've been saying it like this. I say, Lord, I need you to go over there. And I need you to tend to that, Lord, because we can't fix it. I need you to visit that address. I mean, show up right now, God. Oh, and I've been saying all of that. And then I speak in tongues after I get through saying it. And then I go back and I say it again. Like God is deaf, like he didn't hear me the first time. I say, Lord, we can't handle too much more of this. And they getting on my nerve, God. But I need you to handle it, Lord. I need you to handle it. It. I need you to fix it, Lord. And I need you to fix it like yesterday. I mean, like last week, like last month. And the more it look like I'm praying, the more they irritating me and getting on my nerves and even got the nerve to lie on you and even... Yeah, and cause confusion and disturbance. And I believe that I've always tried to abide in peace. But 
you know, I didn't realize that was part of patience on my part. So I'm laying in the bed. When we come back on the trip, because God knows we needed a trip. Oh, because if God didn't let us have a trip, uh, somebody said they probably was going to trip out. <laughs> but look at here. You know what? You think you leaving and you getting away from stuff and you come back, you still got to deal with that same old mess. So I'm laying in the bed because my body clock is off. I'm five hours off or so, you know, from being out of the country. And, uh, and so I'm waking up. This is the way God would do us when he really want to deal with us. Um, so I woke up, and, um, and as I woke up, you know, like I teach the class, I say, don't get out of the bed until you offer up some sort of supplication. Well, I wasn't getting out of no bed no one o'clock in the morning. I was going to lay right there, and I said, Lord, I just need, for you to fix this, Lord. I said, Lord, I need you to attend to this. I, I mean, would you please, I mean, settle this. Lord, do something in a hurry. You know, that's the way, you know, I pray. Now, maybe y'all say something different, but that's the way I was praying about it, right? So I laid there, and sooner or later, I went back to sleep. But somewhere between uh, 4 and 5 o'clock, the Lord gave me this dream. And he showed me the conclusion of the matter that all was well. Well, I thought that would be it. Well, you know, when God showed you something, you just like, well, I'm gonna take him at his word. I didn't have this dream and I know that dream was real. I, I knew it was from God, but I just knew that that dream was gonna happen that day. I mean that day, that hour, that moment before I left the house. But little did I know, oh, that's when the enemy really decided to be ugly. I mean, there, there are some things, that's why the Bible tells us, hey, listen here, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and wickedness in high places. That's what we're wrestling against. So then there are times that you got to go to a deeper level, you got to go to another dimension, and then you got to have it coupled with patience. As God is doing all of that. I mean, we know how to bind and loose. We know how to call and we know how to answer. We know how to do those things. I mean, you know, I got a whole lot of information on how to get the enemy off of your track. But this one particular thing was just like, a little, you know, just irritating. And it wasn't until later when I began to research and find out, Ernestine, you need to have some patience. And you need to accept, tolerate, trouble, suffering without getting angry. Wasn't I wasn't losing my temper, but I sure enough was irritated. I'm talking about me. And I'm sure each of you could probably find yourself somewhere in there. Now, am I telling that you're supposed to put up with the devil's mess? Absolutely not. But while you are praying and believing God and you're allowing God to work in you, you still got to have the patience that is necessary to see the full manifestation what it is that you are asking God to do. And it may not come just exactly the way that you want it to come or when you want it to come. That's why it's necessary to have patience. And that has been one of my prayers. Lord, I want you, and I know this is a little different, I want you to bless the women here that are single, that are desiring mates, with good men, sanctified men, godly men, men that would take care of them, love them, support them, and their children if they have any, so they don't have to go out in the street and look for something that is not worthy of them because they're in the kingdom. They're your daughters, and I believe that you desire better for them than what that. That is what I pray often for the women here that are single, that are desiring mates. And that takes patience as you are preparing. So, we still need to wait on him. Lastly, and then we're going to pray, agreement with others in prayer. The Bible says in Matthew 18, 19 through 20, 
Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, everybody say anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done. Did you all get that? It says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I will do it. Saints, it's power in agreement. It's power in getting together and yoking up with someone that is believing God for something that you are praying for and turn the tables and likewise. So often we go through and we feel like, Lord, I'm by myself. Is anybody in agreement with me? Is anybody praying? And then there are times where other people will pray for you, but then who are you praying for? Who are you in agreement with? I mean, you know, it's one thing for God to bless one person, but then you have to stop and consider, Lord, just like you bless Ann, and I was blessed by Ann. Uh, I want somebody to go in that room real quickly, and I want everyone to come right now, come to the altar real quick, and we want to kneel down before God. <clears throat> I want you to go in that room. Those pillows for me, because I know some of us, our knees are not in the best of shape. I was blessed by Ann said something, uh, the other day, she said, you know, she'd been hearing the teacher talk about faith and the power of our words and how important it is for us to not be snared because the Bible says that death and life is in the power of our own tongue, right? And then, you know, and she, she went on to say, you know, I'm believing God to move and I didn't start packing up some boxes. I got me some boxes. She said, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know when I'm going. And I thought about that. And I said, Lord, if Ann's got enough faith and confidence to believe that she is going to move and you are opening doors for her, I agree with her. That's what I'm talking about saying. Sometimes we don't agree with people as they are believing God for something. Well, I don't know why God need to do that for them. I don't know. I don't, you know, we pass all these opinions. But don't you want somebody to agree with you when you are asking God? Come on, saints, real quick. For you that can kneel, I'm asking you to kneel and just bow your heads before the Lord. And you that cannot, you sit on the front or sit close. Amen. And they have some pillows here. And it's so important. It's so important that we remember that we're in covenant with God. And we just only share just snippets of some of the fundamental keys to prayer and how God delights in hearing us ask him for things and knowing that we just need to have the faith. And then we need to be persistent. And then we need to just be patient. And then we need to get an agreement with somebody. So tonight, we're going to start with Make an acknowledgement before God. If there's any door, anything that we have done, anything we have said, any course corrections that we need to make, then ask God. Say, Lord, is there anything that is tying up my prayer from reaching you and for you not answering me the way that I know that you delight to answer me? I'm asking everyone to just bow your head and close your eyes. Because this is what this is all about. And whatever God speaks to your heart, whatever you need to make right, saints, I want us, want you, me included, make a commitment, go and make it right. Just make it right. When we make it right, I can assure you that God will answer. And it won't take him long because we need God to move in our lives. We need God to move in our church. We need God to move in our city. We need God to move in our world. And we need God, especially in these United States of America. We need the help of God. And we are the ones that have been called by his name. 
And he said that if my people who are called by my name would just humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said that he will hear from heaven. He will heal our land. Come on, in your own spirit, come on, begin to pray. Begin to talk to God about it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, reveal unto me anything that is hindering my prayer life. And help me to get rid of it quickly. Lord, if there's any arrogance, any pretense, any bitterness, any manipulation, any rudeness, any lack of faith, Lord, forgive me and cleanse me. I forgive those, God, that have wronged me. I release them, Lord, from paying the debt back, for you have forgiven me. Lord, I thank you. Come on, saints, tell the Lord. Lord, we need you. Lord, everybody share my whole by. Lord, we need you in our families. Lord, we need you in our families. We need you on our job. Lord, we need you to intervene in our lives in a greater way that we have never seen before. God, we need you to handle business, Lord, that we cannot handle. Lord, we need you to turn, Lord, things and situations around in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need you to save our children. Those that have wandered away from you, Lord, and are from the house of the Lord, we're asking you to send them back, Lord. Give them a mind, God, to come back to the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Lord, don't give them no peace and no rest until they say yes to your will. In the name of the Lord, oh God, if God, like your servant prayed, Lord, create us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. Lord, blot out our transgressions. Do it for us, Lord. Lord, do it for us. Lord, those things that we have walked over, those things that seem like they were so insignificant, but Lord, it was offensive to you. It was offensive to your kingdom of God. Lord, we pray for a cleansing and a washing. We pray for a renewal, Lord. Lord, some of us have forgotten about the altar of prayer. Lord, we have forgotten to acknowledge you like we should. Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Lord, Oh, God, help us to find our way to the house of the Lord. Help us to join ourselves with our sisters and brothers in prayer. Lord, knowing that it's not just one or two responsibility, Lord, to pray. But you are commanding me in everywhere to pray, God. Lord, let us build altars at home. Lord, let us go and build prayer closets. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Lord, when you called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. Oh, God, we was hungry for you. Lord, we were hungry for you. Lord, stir us again, God. Put a hunger and a thirst back in us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, do it, do it, do it, do it, God. Lord, revive. Revive us again, God. Revive us. Revive us. Lord, restore that which the enemy has stolen from us. Those things that we have taken for granted. Oh, God, those things, oh, God. Those little foxes, Lord, that have gotten on the vine. And they begin to eat it. Clip at us. Oh, God, reclinable. Come on, Zion. We need you to cry out before God. Help us, God. Help us, Lord. Help us to do right. Help us to act right. Help us to represent you, God. Not to bring a snare to the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, help us to be people that are honest, full of integrity. In the name of Jesus, Lord, take away from us lying lips and falsehood. In the name of the Lord, help us to preserve our vessels as unto honor. Oh, God, not to backbite. Oh, God, not to homong. In the name of the Lord, oh God, deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us, God. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. Lord Jesus, 
Lord, help us to tell others. Lord, forgive us when we don't tell others about your goodness. Lord, we thank you. Oh, God. Lord, put within us a greater capacity to pray. Oh, capacity to push, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, to rise above, oh God, uh, our contentment uh, and our place where we are, Lord, but refresh us and renew us uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh God, fill us again. Uh, fill us to our cups overflow uh, and overrun, God. Uh, overrun, yet Shando, Lord, that we will fill you. Oh, yes, God, that we will fill you. Lord, that we will know that you're there, that your presence is there. Oh, Come on, saints, I need to hear you tonight. God needs to hear you around this altar. That's why we here. Oh, to call on him, to call on him. Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy, oh God. Oh God, we didn't mean to, Lord. But we took it for granted, Lord. Lord, we don't want to take you for granted. We don't want to take your mercy for granted. We don't want to take your kindness for granted. Oh God, but we want to be livers of your word. Lord, help us to learn how to love the brethren as you love the brethren. Lord, without falsehood, in the name of Jesus. Lord, without respect of a person. Lord, take away from us the big eyes and the little yous. But Lord, help us to be humble one before the other. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to be quick to repent. Quick to apologize. Quick to say I'm sorry. Oh God, help us, help us, help us. Lord, help us behind closed doors. Help us, Lord, when we go to the store, in the name of Jesus, to pay for that which we put in our cart. Don't steal no fruit. Don't steal no bubble gum. Don't take nothing, Lord, that we don't pay for. In the name of Jesus, Lord, don't let us cheat on nothing. But Lord Jesus, we want you to help us, Lord. Help righteousness. Lord, help us to be righteous. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we need you to stir our kettle again. Some of us have grown cold and indifferent, but Lord, we pray that you will forgive us of our indifference towards you, Lord, towards your house, towards the things of God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we need you. Ah, we need you, Lord. 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 We need you, God. Lord, forgive us of our sharp tongues for speaking out of turn. Forgive us, God, of our unkind words, our unkind actions, our unkind looks. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God. Come on, saints. Oh, hallelujah, say. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you are loving and good. But we thank you for your kindness. We thank you that you have not consumed us. We thank you for your throne of grace is available in our time of need. Make us strong and effective in prayer. Help us to walk closely with you in the name of Jesus. Oh God, and when you prompt us, Lord, help us not to ignore your promptings, but help us to be yielded. Yielded, oh God. Yielded, Lord. Yielded, yielded, yielded. Let obedience work in us. Have your way, God. 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 Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In the name of Jesus, 
Lord, not our will, but thine's be done. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Help us, the Lord Jesus, to renew our covenant to prayer. Prayer in our personal time. Prayer at home. Prayer in the marketplace. Wherever you prompt us. Lord, come to the house of the Lord and pray. Help us to join together in prayer. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We give you glory.